We would love to have, we, I mean, Elon would say next year he would love to have us have 25 missions a year. Wow. And, and in the next few years, 100. And the other day he was telling me, Kathy, I would love to launch a couple of times a day. So Thank you. I don't know. Big dreams. Ex Big dreams, right? 2025 is shaping up to be an exciting year, with Starship's launch rate expected to soar, as confirmed by Elon Musk and Kathy Luters. Are you ready for it? Meanwhile, NASA has some intriguing plans in the works, including an extended cargo supply contract to the ISS and the launch of a new telescope. Let's kick off the week by diving into these updates on today's episode of Great SpaceX. We're on the road to Flight 6, a mission that marks a critical step towards SpaceX's ambitious future. Initially, SpaceX proposed 25 Starship launches per year from Starbase, but delays from the FAA and environmental agencies temporarily stalled this plan. However, with the success of Flight 5 and potential regulatory reforms ahead, SpaceX is ready to get this plan back on track. As SpaceX Starbase General Manager Kathy Luters mentioned, Elon Musk is aiming for 25 Starship launches per year, equating to one launch every two weeks by the end of next year. This ambitious cadence would lay the foundation for an even more audacious goal, scaling up to 100 launches annually, matching the current rate of Falcon 9 launches. Musk himself confirmed the goal, tweeting, We will be much faster than that signaling the company's intent to exceed expectations in launch frequency. Achieving 25 or more launches per year is vital for SpaceX to meet its long-term objectives. The frequency is essential for preparing for NASA's Artemis III mission in 2026, where Starship will transport astronauts to the moon. Beyond the moon, Starship's development is key to SpaceX's Mars colonization mission, with high launch frequencies ensuring that Starship will be ready for these monumental endeavors. In addition to the mission goals, SpaceX plans to achieve the catching of the ship, a significant milestone expected by April of 2024, 2025. This will be followed by the construction of a refueling system, which NASA expects to be operational by March of 2026. This system will enable Starship tanker flights, critical for lunar and Mars missions. Furthermore, achieving 25 launches per year at Starbase will pave the way for SpaceX's expansion to Florida, where the company plans to support NASA's Artemis program with an additional 44 launches annually. This expansion, combined with Starbase's high-frequency launches, will strengthen SpaceX's position as a leading force in space exploration. In short, reaching 25 launches per year is a crucial milestone for SpaceX, not just for operational readiness, but for its broader goals of lunar and Mars exploration. If successful, SpaceX will reshape the future of space travel and exploration, setting the stage for rapid, reliable missions to the moon, Mars, and beyond. But we all know this is just the beginning. Musk has consistently emphasized that faster, meaning 25 launches or one every two weeks, is not the ultimate goal. NASA has revealed that SpaceX must first achieve one launch per week supported by two towers before it can begin operations in Florida. Hitting one launch per week would result in over 50 launches annually. From there, the goal would be to double that number to 100, as Kathy Luters mentioned, eventually escalating to multiple launches per day and ultimately reaching thousands of launches annually. This plan is essential for SpaceX to realize its vision of sending a million tons of cargo to Mars and establishing a city with a million inhabitants on the Red Planet. Achieving 25 launches per year by next year is a crucial first step toward that larger goal. In terms of frequency, this represents a six-fold increase compared to this year, assuming Flight 6 is the last of 2024. This jump is a significant milestone for SpaceX, especially given the skepticism surrounding Starship's delays in 2024 due to regulatory hurdles and technical challenges. But SpaceX has been relentless in its pursuit of progress. To support this rapid acceleration, SpaceX is continuing to enhance its systems. Star Factory, the company's manufacturing facility, is now fully operational and proving to be highly efficient. The Starship stacking process, which once took months, is now down to just under one and a half months. By next year, SpaceX aims to produce a Starship every week, and in the coming years, that pace could increase to one Starship per day, further ramping up production. SpaceX has also made substantial investments in its testing infrastructure. After acquiring the Massey gun range, the company upgraded its testing facilities, including a new flame trench system. 
This infrastructure is crucial for accelerating ship and super heavy testing, which is already progressing at an unprecedented pace, with the potential for even faster advancements. Regarding the launch site, SpaceX completed Stacking Tower B in just 41 days and is now working on a new OLM design. The addition of two towers will significantly expedite both launch and recovery processes, with even more towers expected to appear at Starbase in the coming years to further increase the speed and volume of operations. As Kathy Luters said, we are approaching 2025, a year when SpaceX's big dream will begin to come to life with Starship. The pace of innovation and launches will continue to accelerate just as Elon Musk has envisioned. If you're excited about this future, reply big dream faster in the comments and be sure to like, share, and subscribe to stay up to date on SpaceX's thrilling journey. Next, let's discuss NASA's recent update regarding the extension of its ISS cargo supply contract. NASA has decided to extend its cargo contract to the International Space Station through 2030, aligning with the station's planned retirement. This decision was first outlined by the agency in March of 2023. According to procurement filings from November 8th, this extension will cover the period from late 2026 to late to late 2030 with Northrop Grumman, Sierra Space, and SpaceX continuing to provide cargo resupply services. This means the vehicles in use will remain Cygnus, Dream Chaser, and Dragon. These three companies were originally awarded the CRS-2 contract in 2016. Explaining the decision to extend the contract, NASA stated there are no other CRS-2 certified visiting vehicles in the current marketplace for providing cargo resupply to the ISS. Extension of the existing contracts is the most effective means of ensuring continued provision of these services for the extended duration of the ISS. Before making this choice, NASA reportedly considered several other companies for inclusion, including Gravitix, the Exploration Company, a European firm, and the UK-based GEPA Logistics. However, it seems none of these companies met NASA's specific requirements for the mission. The total value of the CRS-2 contracts is capped at 14 billion US dollars. NASA has assured that the extension will not exceed this budget. Federal databases show that as of now, NASA has awarded 2.7 billion to Northrop Grumman, 1.4 to Sierra Space, and 2.8 to SpaceX for a total of 6.9 billion. Billion US dollars. The choice of these three companies makes sense given their proven track records for ISS resupply. SpaceX's Dragon and Northrop Grumman's Cygnus have been operational for many years, with Dragon's most recent mission being CRS-31. Dragon is also the only US vehicle currently transporting NASA astronauts to the ISS. As for Dream Chaser, although it has yet to launch, it shows strong potential for future missions. This also represents a significant setback for another vehicle, Starliner. After facing numerous issues following its crew flight test, it is still under review and its future schedule remains unclear. The delays have caused considerable losses for Boeing, which has suggested launching cargo missions as a way to offset the costs. However, that opportunity may be slipping away. It's clear that no one would risk using a vehicle with so many uncertainties for resupply missions, especially since these missions are crucial to the ISS's operations. Could this be the end for Starliner? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Now let's turn to an exciting update from NASA regarding a new telescope. At NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California, engineers recently completed the successful integration of a key component into the Roman Space Telescope, the Roman Coronagraph Instrument. This technology can block out starlight, enabling the telescope to detect the faint light emitted by planets outside our solar system. The Roman Space Telescope is currently scheduled for launch in May of 2027. With a field of view at least 100 times larger than that of the Hubble Space Telescope, it will focus on exploring mysteries related to dark energy, exoplanets, and infrared astrophysics. To achieve these goals, the telescope will use its primary science instrument, the Wide Field Instrument, alongside the Roman Coronagraph Instrument, which serves as a technology demonstration for future space missions. This will be the first telescope specifically designed to search for signs of life on exoplanets. Rob Zellum, Deputy Project Scientist for Communications at NASA Goddard, shared, In order to get from where we are to where we want to be, we need the Roman Coronagraph to demonstrate this technology. We'll apply the lessons learned to the next generation of NASA flagship missions that will be explicitly designed to search for Earth-like planets. The Roman Space Telescope's most notable technology is its coronagraph, which is roughly the size of a baby grand piano. This sophisticated system, made up of masks, prisms, detectors, and self-flexing mirrors, 
works together to block out the intense glare from distant stars, allowing scientists to detect planets orbiting those stars. Currently, telescopes use a technique called transiting, which requires a certain distance to observe faint or distant planets. However, the Roman coronagraph is designed to detect planets that are 100 million times fainter than their stars, making it 100 to 1,000 times more powerful than existing space-based coronagraphs, according to NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. While it's not yet clear which vehicle will launch this telescope with the 2027 timeline in mind, it's likely to be Starship. Given the progress SpaceX has made with its rockets alongside the capabilities of this groundbreaking telescope, we are on the brink of a new era in space exploration. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.